So Jay, there's been a lot of talk at FarmTech about uh, variable rate technology. Uh, it's something we've been hearing about for a long time. Is it gaining in popularity on farms in Western Canada? Oh, I think definitely uh, our experience has been that uh, we've been adding new clients and uh, get more and more interest every year uh, asking questions about variable rate technology, variable rate fertility, and, and where we're going with variable rate for other applications. So yeah, there has been a lot of talk about uh, fertilization, but there is other applications for precision egg, is there not? Absolutely. Uh, there's variable rate fungicide. We're, we're exploring that, the ability to, to put on fungicides heavier in areas where the crop needs it more. Uh, variable rate desiccation, applying Again, heavier rates where, uh, where higher rates are needed to desiccate the, to kill down the plant easier. And cutting back or shutting off where, where the crop's already desiccated naturally. Yeah, so I get feedback from farmers saying, you know, that's uh, variable, or precision ag is something for big farms, or precision ag is something for small farms. Is there really a kind of farm type that fits precision ag? Not by size, I don't think so. Um, I think it probably has a little bit more to do with aptitude. And as we move forward, that's getting easier and easier as well. The controllers are getting simpler to, to manage, uh, easier to understand. Uh, farm size, we've got guys literally that have 600 acres that are doing variable rate, all the way up to nearly 20,000 acre farms that are, that are doing variable rate corner to corner. Probably uh, how new the equipment is has something to do with that as well, no? It can, but not always. Um, your equipment dealer would probably like you to see you get brand new equipment to do variable rate, but especially when we've got guys doing liquid and or uh, anhydrous. Uh, we can get guys going with a lot of the existing equipment they already have. They don't know that he's capable of doing variable rate for a fairly small investment. A couple thousand dollars, we can usually get guys going on to try variable rate to get their feet wet. So is there a crop type that it, it's, really the, it's really popular? Or is it kind of across all crops? It is across all crops. Where you see the biggest bang for your buck is definitely the crops that use the most fertilizers. So, especially your nitrogen intensive crops. So corn. Corn, canola, uh, use a lot of nitrogen. Wheat uses more nitrogen than barley, for example. So, those crops are ones we suggest guys start with. Wheat and canola for broad acre farms, for example. That's where they're going to see the most immediate results. So what can you tell us about variable rate seeding? That's something that we haven't seen a lot of. We've been sort of hear, starting to hear more and more about it. Do you have some trial data or is, is becoming, have you seen some results? We, we've been trying and we've been working with some of our clients. I think that variable rate seeding is a good question and I think there's, there's some opportunity there. Uh, hard data is very hard to come by. There's not a lot of uh, rate research done based on spatial variability. So we're working with clients giving our best guess, working within recommended ranges of, of seeding rates and trying different things on different spatial variation within the field. Changing the rate on the high spots versus the low spots versus maybe the, the saline or solanetic areas of the field. So we're kind of at the trialing stand. We're trying to see what the opportunities are in terms of variable rate seeding. Yeah, really a lot of our clients have pushed us to say they want to try variable rate seeding. We say, you know, there's not a lot of data on this, but if, you, if you're willing to try with us, uh, let's see what we can learn. So what's the, what is the premise? Like, obviously we change the seeding rate based on where you are in the field, but uh, in the hilltops we seed lighter, or how do, or, and in the low spots we seed heavier. Or how, how do you? How does that work out? Good question. While we sit down with the client, we, we ask them, you know, what that hilltop? Maybe it's a sandy hilltop. What what does that sandy hilltop typically do for you? Oh well, it, maybe it dries out every July 25th and it doesn't grow much at all anyway. Well, maybe the plants are too crowded there is, is the theory, and, and there's, we're seeding too heavy a rate for what available moisture is there. So in a situation like that, we'd probably cut it back to a lower plants per square foot than we would in a high producing area of the field. Okay, thanks a lot, Jay. Yeah, thank you.